Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Reich, in which we're playing as the Feng Chen government. I don't think I've ever played this nation before, but we need to talk about the preservation of the Xinhai Revolution. Ironically, Feng Shan is a sole national government upholding the order established by the Xinhai Revolution in 1911, which called for the overthrow of the Qing and the establishment of a republic. Although its republican commitments are questionable, and southern reclamation is currently unrealistic, the government has loudly advocated both goals as a fostered democratic legitimacy. And no do Fu Guo Chang Bing. Translating roughly to the enriched country, strengthen the army. This proverb dates back to ancient legalist philosophers, but has been used more recently to inspire reforms in both Guangzhou era China and Maiji era Japan. Now it's applied again in Feng Shan, as the government seeks to modernize and eventually strike south against the resurgent Zili clique and from there establish control over all of China, but the bastion in the north. As the year dawns, 1936, of course, Feng Shen stands in the northeast as the final bastion of China's Republican dream. As with many things in China, however, the abstractions of this dream hide complex and often inconvenient truths. The Feng Qing government of the Republic of China, contesting the Qing government's claims to legitimacy, maintains democracy only as a thin veneer, covering what has always been and perhaps always will be an authoritarian state. The assembly in Xinjiang is widely regarded to be corrupt, power divided between autocratic generals, unscrupulous railway barons, and pan-Asianist ideologues with questionable motivations. Admit it all stands Grand Marshal Zheng Zulin. His ambitions great, but limited by the stark realities of the Zili strength and Japanese power, for now forced to walk a political tightrope between the two, and above the machinations of his own divided government. The status quo cannot last forever, and if the right moment to strike south is not chosen soon, it may never come at all. The struggling cost of the wars with the south and the severance of the economic ties left Feng Shen reeling, and while past years have been spent rebuilding, there is much left to do. Likewise, the army suffered from neglect and must be reorganized. The Japanese, their influence growing by the day, present both a dire threat and an opportunity. The waters ahead are treacherous, and it will take a truly great helmsman to steer the ship of state, not only to its survival, but also towards the reclamation of all of China. Briefings are available on the Feng Shen Special Mechanics, as its relationship with the Japanese and internal politics. Special Mechanics? Um, uh, so, okay, if you want to read about this, I don't want to read every single one of these, but if you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. Cool. Your aim should be to balance the various factions, each of which has the potential to be to abuse the power if given too much, although each will do so differently. Factions will nominate ministers, who are pursuing their own agenda, potentially align with their own faction or other country, could have negative consequences for us as well. There's also the Concordia Association, um, as a loose indicator of Japanese influencing the country. As their influence grows, it will lead to increasing bonuses to production, but at the cost of PP and autonomy. Okay. And the Japanese. So they exercise the power on us through treaties, um... Primary institution responsible for this growth is the South Mature Railway Company, a Montetsu. Profits, which are in recent years, have accounted for nearly a quarter of Japan's entire budget, which is pretty impressive. Um, so, we just have to be careful of these. Zhang has pursued a patrick of policy. Promote some pan-Asian brother with Japan. Occasionally, so. And the politics. Okay, so four political factions. The Recovery League. Fallen generals, governors, bureaucrats, and politicians without any strong ideological affiliation. Um, cool. So, uh, uh, the League is highly split despite controlling a large portion of the Assembly, lacking the political will to uh, act decisively. The Zhang clique holds no specific ideology beyond promoting the furtherance of the Grand Marshal's political powers. The Communications clique, to merge from the former Bai Yang government, uh, the Communications clique is a collection of railroad and telegraph barons. Okay, so kind of business people. And the Concordia Association. Uh, this one represents a interest of Matsutsu or the Japanese, so the Recovery League might not to be too bad. These guys, or maybe the Zhang clique, so. Onward, my friends, onward. And I apologize for taking so long, but yeah. We'll do the Fugu next, we'll watch China collapse, and see what happens. Oh no, President Kerensky! Oh no, Observer Rights and Location Councils. Uh, I'll read this once, but if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. The South Manchuria Railway Company, colloquially known as Mantetsu, has long dominated large sectors of the Feng Jin economy, and in turn acts as Japan's primary means of influence over our government. With this influence, while it's unwelcome, it brings crucial capital and technology without which the Grand Marshal could never help to retake China. The company today has announced record, uh, record profits, much of which goes to Japan's government in the form of tax revenue. Is this a necessary evil? Pretty much, at least we get more stability from that one for now. But yeah, we gotta bounce these guys out. Recovery League? So we have the Recovery League right now. Under Zeng Zulin, who is leading our country right now, Mr. Handsome over there. The Zeng clique. <clears throat> Grand Marshal's political powers. While well, it makes preferences to democracy, Zeng supporters are not committed to Republican ideals and promote them only for their utility. And Mr. Handsome over here. Nice. Also, we do have a few ships in our navy, but honestly, they're not great, but you know, it could be worse. Heinous assassination in Shenyang. On his way to government offices, a government, a member of the communications 
clique was gunned down in public by what appears to be Azili loyalists, recruited from among the northeast Manchu population. The Qing government has been known to recruit spies and assassins before, but some rumors uh, suggested that this assassin was instead hired by the members of the Concordia Association, locked in conflict with the communications cliques, railway, and telegraph barons for control of the country's infrastructure. Crap. An opportunity rises, though. In the years since the Feng Shun's army retreat beyond the Great Wall, a watchful eye has been kept on the south. <clears throat> the natural choke point created by the Shanghai, or Shanghai Pass, has always made it hard for the armies to get in, but equally difficult for our own to get out. Any efforts to reclaim China has always depended upon a moment of southern weakness. Such a moment now seems set to arrive, as simmering anti-German sentiment has erupted into violence in the League of Eight Provinces, and the governor of Hanui has broken away from Nanjing. <coughs> However, hoping to leverage the League and the central government against one another for his own game. Unfortunately, we are not yet ready to begin our long awaited campaign, as there are outstanding issues in the Northeast to be settled, and it's not exactly clear what will become of the situation in the League. We must watch and wait for the right opportunity. Let us choose wisely. And actually, what's the core population like? Rumors incite regional uproar. Oh boy. Although, no plans have been made public or even exist in anything approaching a final form. Rumors have already begun to spread that the Feng Shing army is preparing to march south and conquer Beijing within the next month. The scattered news coming in from the south has inspired a potent mix of excitement and concern. And confrontations have already broken out in tea rooms, bars, and other public places between ardent nationalists and regionalist Dongbai party members. A Dong Bai party was not a political party in any real sense, and more of a nickname applied to detractors to anything espousing doubts over Zhang Zulin's mission to reunite the country. A significant number of local officials and bureaucrats, including school teachers, share this kind of skepticism and began organizing protests and criticizing what they view as a costly and unnecessary war. Naturally, the government will not refute the rumors, as it might free up Beijing's hand to intervene in the league crisis. Rumors can, of course, be quite dangerous. Black Monday? Yes. Travelers? Who gives a crap about Afghanistan? Oh, look at that lag. Ah, second Russian Civil War. Nice. And then, or suppress regional sentiment. For many years, Zhang Zulin's <clears throat> primary political slogan was the Northeast for the Northeast, but when his ambitions turned towards Beijing, this regional message had to be set aside. Ever since, it has been proven a thorn in the Grand Marshal's side, and many still espouse these old sentiments. The time has come to put the matter to rest once and for all. Also, let me know in the comments. Do you want to play the left came to you again sometime? Because I have played as them before, and I don't mind playing as them again. It's just been so long since I've played um, Kaiser Reich. So, shouting Dong Bai, Vila Dong Bairon, or the Northeast for the Northeastern people, protesters have gathered near the Grand Marshal's Palace and the Hopin Sophia Square, and outside Jilin's Medical College demanding an end to war preparations. The numbers are not great enough to present serious problems, but and police have already been dispatched to maintain order, but this is only part of an ongoing campaign which threatens to undermine public confidence in the regime. If the whole of the Northeast cannot be united behind the Grand Marshal's dream to reunite all of China, then how can it ever be realized? Unfortunate. Who wanted political power? Hot-headed allies. Chen Tiaoyong of the Anqing clique, our newly committed ally, as well as Zhang Zongcheng, who has long had good relations with us and fought on our side a long time ago, do not have a good relationship. What makes this matter worse is that Chen sees his Anqing clique as a rightful ruler of all the primary five provinces that make up the League. Zhang seeks to enter the conflict as well, but most likely will not be satisfied if he is left with nothing, which is bound to happen if Chen insists on controlling all the five provinces. We'll have to begin thinking of a solution, because we most definitely do not want war between our allies. I hope it ends well. So, we do not have good relations, no good relations. <coughs> Basically, no one has good relations here. But I'd rather see the provinces die, maybe? Uh, Chen? I don't think you're going to survive, but we'll, we'll try it. We can try it. Enter the country, strengthen the army. After decades of decline and destitution, the necessity oh look at that of progress and development has never been more glaring. However, while we cannot afford to stagnate, change comes with, with its own risks, namely mismanagement and public discontent. A task falls to the government to answer the call to enrich a country and strengthen the army. We must prioritize one over the other, or over the other country. Strengthen the army. Tell me more about the state of the economy. Um, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Uh, let's see. Reform could serve to increase the government's revenues through suppression of otherwise endemic corruption. While well, Japan has invested interest in seeing it succeed relative to the Qing's government, they only provide assistance with specific efforts aiming to move past their backwards industry, even as they attempt to widen their already worrying influence over the country. And let's talk about the army. So if you don't know about this, please go right ahead. It's an impressive sight by most Chinese standards. Um, of course, all of our weapons generally are outdated. The greatest deficiency is morale. The China Flying Corps and pride and joy of the Grand Marshal's oldest son, Zheng Zuliang. Zuliang. Um, you know what? You know what? I'm going to go with the country. As much as the army is great, 
Honestly, we're just going to be grinding up against a bunch of the enemy Chinese factions and even the Japanese, so let's go to Nurture Country. So, Silent Subversive. Huh. Required to move regional settlement. Justify mass arrest. Develop the three uh, northeast provinces. Well, <coughs> well, at least those guys are done. Can we get another. Re Ooh. You know what? Maybe we'll go that one and get another research slot fast. Develop the northeast. three northeast provinces. The Communications Clique nominates a new economic minister. Thanks to the growing strength of government, the Communications Clique has nominated Li Xiaogang to fill the position of economic minister. Granted the role of director of the Chinese Eastern Railway in 1929, Li has never been particularly outspoken or charismatic, but maintains an intricate network of back channels and secret agreements with low-level officials and bureaucrats across the Northeast. As a most important relationship, however, are with the railway unions which work with the Communications Clique to oppose Mansetsu and Japanese influence in return for rights, benefits, and control over the workplace. Li is known to be silently competent, but the Grand Marshal can always choose to prevent the, no the appointment. Communications click, huh? Uh, yeah, why not? Cool. Hey, the one division has arrived. Here, I'll take you over here. Oh, we're already fighting. Well, would you look at that? We're probably not going to win here, but whatever. And regional stick action. Uh, maybe when you buy that, please go right ahead, I guess. The same thing. More concerning talk, though, uh, as among the members of the local trade associations, chambers of commerce, and town assemblies of a tax boycott. Unlike some of the young students, these older men remember the hard times late last decade, when war expenditures grew, outgrew the northeastern economy and set it into economic freefall. And now, uh, let's get some more research speed. That'd be good. An offer from the Kenpai Tai. The Kenpai Tai, the Japanese Army's extrajudicial police force, have taken note of a regional's problem and come forward with a partial solution. With a wide network of informants, they claim to have information on a number of figures underpinning the regionalist movement. Information they volunteer. In response, we must provide intelligence on several anti-Japanese agitators and insurgents who have so far slipped through their fingers. Not in the least due to our own interference. So far, it's been convenient for us to keep in contact with these nationalists, pending cases where we need to push back against Japanese influence. Is this one of the cases, or should we take the deal and offer these people up on a silver platter? Take the deal. Um, we're going to do that anyways eventually, so no. We developed the three northeast provinces. Uh, three northeast provinces, Fengxian, Jilin, and Heliojiang, already contain over 30% of China's railways, uh, railroads, and much of its heavy industry. However, if the international reclamation wars to be won, both will have to be expanded upon and improved. Ideally, this would be achieved solely by the Chinese people, but reality dictates that the Japanese will lead much of the path forward. Good or bad. The Montetsu Bribes. A pair of Concordia Association members were recently caught attempting to bribe Recovery League politicians, and while this activity has long been suspected, this is the first a time it's been caught in the open. Although members of the other parties have motioned to remove the offending members, the Japanese consulate has already delivered a message strongly advising that no action be taken against the members of the Concordia Association. The Grand Marshal could choose to do so regardless, but not without risking the Japanese wrath. Um... We'll do nothing. Don't want to piss off the Japanese too much yet. The Gang of Three. Not the Gang of Four, but Gang of Three. As a loose coalition of fallen generals, governors, bureaucrats, and politicians exiled from the South by the collapse of the Baiyang government, the Recovery League is the widely acknowledged to be susceptible to corruption. However, recent discoveries by police have turned up something unusually troubling. It seems that a group of Recovery League politicians who were made mayors of townships in Jilin, owing to their experience with the governing in the South, has, in fact, never been mayors anywhere at all. Instead, they've killed or replaced them at namesakes, and although through a complicated plot of deceit, fooled the authorities and while eliminating any who might contradict them. The web of lies, corruption, and murder necessary to sustain this falsehood stretches across the whole of the province, and damage dealt to the government's legitimacy is not inconsiderable. Disgusting. Well, crap. We just can't do well here, can we? The regional sink. Oh my gosh, we got encircled. Well, this is unfortunate. Why do you say something myself? Okay, come, game. Please, let me get out here. I don't want to die. Protesters again gathered in several prominent locations in northeast cities. The numbers were not great enough to present serious problems, but that did not stop police from cracking down hard, wadding into the mass with clubs and rifle butts, and scattering fleeing protesters in a crowded streets. Angered by the violence, some Dongbai party members have already vowed to return in even greater numbers, but it's hoped that this quick and decisive response will deter all but the movement's hardliners, making them all easier to round up in silence. More concerning talk is among members of local trade associations, chambers of commerce, and town assemblies of a tax boycott, of course. Um, yeah, that's the last part, so they're unfortunate. So, um, 
uh, solid strategy subversives, or justify mass arrests. So long as the regional's movement remains peaceful, we lack the institutional and public support to crush it decisively. By dispatching agents disguised as protesters, we can pr push the movement towards violent means, cost them their public support, and then justify mass arrests. I want to do this one, but it seems like we should probably do this stuff first. So silent, silence targeted subversives. The regional's movement has never been organized. <clears throat> but, come on. Has received support from the local gentry, school teachers, and government bureaucrats. Some of these figures have become increasingly prominent, and by silencing them, we may cut the head from the regional snake. Some can be bribed, others can be threatened or fired, to say nothing of other persuasive influences. You remember that? Was great head again? Fail coup in Beijing. Oh boy. Oh, look at that. Fail coup. Zila Click is here. Woo, Pai Fu. Oh, the guy's died. Well. Socialist Revolution. Oh. I don't like any of you guys. Um, I guess I'll send you one more division, though. <clears throat> All I care about is getting as much army XP as possible, so. Oh, actually, can we send you. We should send you planes. Because you do have an airbase? No, you don't, so it doesn't even matter. Okay, whatever. Now it gives us more stability, too. So we have. What is this? Region, regional Settlement, which is a war sport. Mantetsu Influence. Alright, we do some civvies from that. The Kwantung Army, which is not great. Investment de Dearth. Not death, but dearth. Unscrupulous governance, which sucks. And Backwards Industry, of course. And we have some coffee to keep us nice and warm. Yay, we can see things now. There you go. Mm, you like drugs, huh, son? Regional sake action. Uh, cool. Unfortunate. Oh, look at that. Divisions. Rearm the Northeast. The Concordia Association nominates a new economic minister. Thanks to the growing influence of government, the Concordia Association has nominated Yu Zishan for the position of economic minister. An army officer through and through, Yu takes a pragmatic approach to Feng Shen's position vis a vis Japan, seeing his only way for Feng Shen to reconquer the South and for China to, as a whole to retain its identity in the face of the Western domination. With a great deal of experience managing supply lines and weapons production during the war, Yu is likely to pursue a policy of emphasizing military industrialization, closely aligning his position with the interests of the Kwantung Army. The final decision rests, of course, with the Grand Marshal. We lose political power, more resource efficiency game, more construction speed. Now. Nah. Just now. Nah. Found the Xinyang National Academy. I like that too. Ooh. You can study stuff, yeah. My nice curriculum, but I want to get that re research slot though. Oh. Agent Provocateur. Provocateur. Provocateurs in action. Just as planned, our well placed agents have successfully pushed some of the region's movement towards violence. Already increasingly violent protests have caused damage to public property, and reactions have been negative. It only appears a matter of time before we have the justification we need. Nice. As long as these guys don't get encircled here, we can actually kill these guys off. And get quite a bit more army XP. Hopefully. No, we can get encircled here too, which will suck, but hey! Oh! Oh, here come the reds. Oh, crap. It's not good, not good. Auburn revolt riots. Our protests rapidly escalated into an all-out riot last night. As protesters clashed with the police in downtown Habim, there have been 15 recorded deaths, and with unknown numbers of wounded on both sides, numbers possibly stretching into the low hundreds. A particular concern is the Auburn Central Station, which saw its front windows shattered and its roof in flames, damage to the station, and several pieces of rolling uh, stock have been delayed travel along connection rail lines, and bureaucrats of Mansetsu have already registered out their outrage. Cleaning up this mess may take some time, but at least now we have a clear justification for action against the regional's movement. Good and bad. God dang it, how do we get circled here? And reattack him. Oh, oh boy, look at that. You know what? Just attack him for now. Mass arrests begin. With the proper justification now in place, our dutiful police officers to support with the local militia and the Feng Shen army have begun rounding up suspected protesters. The majority will even, uh, god dang it, uh, be sent home, but not necessarily in one piece. Hopefully, their imprisonment will serve as a message to other protesters and any sympathizers that the government will no longer tolerate their subversion. Good riddance. Can I get some help here, you stupid idiots? If you wanted to encircle them... Oh, the Japanese are here too. Nice. Well, good for them, I guess. Oh! We deleted some of the enemy divisions. Gosh dang it, you idiots. Have... Go here too. 
Oh, we actually did it. We actually did it. Look at that. We actually circled these guys. Nice. Oh, oh boy. I feel sort of good about this one. Nice. Now we'll come over here and develop these guys. Beat them up. Beat them up. Awesome. Picking up the educational slack. The Polish military. Our target to remove of regionals dong by party school teachers and other intellectuals has predictably led to an educational chaos and major research interruptions, but staffers of the Japanese consulate come forward with a possible solution. Matetsu has long maintained a series of privately run schools originally intended for sons and daughters of employees, as well as Japanese immigrants, which pride themselves on providing an education comparable to or even exceeding those available in the home islands. At her behest, the Japanese government might pressure Montetsu to open these public and provide staff to fill temporary shortages. Once we open the door to this kind of activity, it will be hard, very difficult to close, and these schools will almost certainly be used to spread Japanese culture and norms. We should consider carefully to decline the offer. Accept the offer. Nope. Hey, we've got political power back. Awesome. Oh! Oh! We didn't get that much army speed, darn it. But that's okay. Things happen. <coughs> I gotta play the left KMT. That seems like a lot of fun. Oh, what happened to Wu Pai Fu? Who she? Zhang Zong Cheng. No one likes us here, but then again, who does? You guys keep training. Nice job, guys. Nice, nice job, Juan. Uh, Zhang Clique, now is the new economic minister. Um, although most members of the Zhang clique are military men without much experience managing a national economy, the office of economic minister is still important to the long-term political and military goals. And as such, Tang Yulim has been nominated to replace the current position's current occupant. Occupant. I'm going to reach a hole. A problem with the rule of Chahar before his forces were driven out by Mongolian cavalry at the end of the last Zaifeng War. Tang is known to be something of an administrative blunder, and his support for the Qing Restoration in 1917 has left him unpopular in some circles. As a result, his appointment seems likely to be a product of clique internal politics, or merely well-placed bribes funded by his considerable wealth. Short of any ill-advised attempts to, can, to open conflict among Chahar, or any administrative embarrassments, Tang stands to be a low-key minister unlikely to stir political competition. Of course, Grand Marshal can always refuse the appointment. Um, he do get more political power, which I do like. Zane clique? Is there a 20% influence? It's not bad. Refuse the appointment. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So we get rid of him, but now we get 0.62, which is not great, but whatever. We have 80 political power, huh? We can get more influence. 38, 30%. We obviously don't want them here. We expel Japanese officers, but that would probably be bad. Demobilization. Huh. I would like to go... Oh, god dang it. We need more war support. Huh. After this, Chinese uniforms for Chinese students. Out of the demoralizing effects of, of our harsh but necessary crackdown on dung by party teachers, our education ministries come forward with a new national school uniform. While this may seem like a small change, uniforms are symbol of Chinese independence and national identity stretching beyond any particular region. Surely a brand new future awaits our students as part of a united China. A point of pride. And uh, Yamato Hotel licenses. One of Matetsu's most successful ventures in Manchuria is its Yamato Hotel franchise, which serves the countless Japanese businessmen who make their way to and from the home aisles every day. Despite the unwelcoming influence by the bear, their skills and capital are crucial. We must decide the future. Yay, another division. <coughs> so who's killing themselves in the world? We want... Uh, we'll ease up conscription eventually. Uh, yeah, I want to send some guys to volunteer and stuff. If possible. Okay, never mind. No one's, no one's killing each other yet. Ah. <sighs> Hey, they're suppressed. The Dongbai Party and the religious movement in general have been suppressed at last. While it's not an end to regional sentiment in the Northeast, it may last for decades to come, but for now, it cease to be a consideration as we turn our attention southwards. Progress. Yay. Yeah, that's what it would be good to do. Oh, the Soy Agricultural Initiative. The ancient significant Korean minority are skilled rice planters, but soybeans have become an extremely desirable cash crop as they provide not only an efficient source of food, fertilizer, and animal feed, but also an oil with industrial applications. Mandetsu undertook an effort to educate Koreans in soy farming, but the response has been mixed. They now want to help to push this through. This could help with balancing stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I'll do it once, why not? Initiative. Soybeans are an extremely flexible crop, useful for human food and animal feed and fertilizer and other stuff. Mantetsu's research wing has been in great strides in making the, in the growing of this food, or soybeans, processing, and using more efficient but planting percentages across Feng Shin remain relatively stagnant. 
Korean farmers, who make up the majority of immigrants to Manchuria, are excellent rice planters, and like many Chinese, prefer crops that they have more experience with. In an attempt to change among this, Montessu began the Soy Agriculture Initiative, a plan intended to educate farmers and incentivize the production of soy as a cash crop, but so far has been poorly received. Montessu hopes to gain the government support in promoting the initiative, which would almost certainly increase soy yields and therefore long-term profits. A few dissenting voices have pointed out that excessive soy production could reduce food security in the Northeast, and the right conditions might lead to famine. Ooh, hmm. Sounds like a bad idea, then. We could use another civvy, though. We could use a lot of things, though. Hmm. And I do... I, I want to balance it out so they get a little more influence here, so... I'll do it once, why not? A little bit of famine didn't, didn't hurt anybody, right? Huh. Oh. German East Asia. We don't really like you. We really don't like you, but... We'll try it. And then, Research Wing. Mantetsu's Research Wing, known as Mantetsu Chosobu, serves as a centerpiece of Japan's colonial program and pursues a wide variety of scientific goals, as massive funding and talent pool could be of great use to us in our own efforts. Sent aid to Sichuan, this whole agricultural initiative has been created a great plus in Feng Shen, while to the southwest, Sichuan still struggles with a massive famine. The representatives have come to us, of all people, requesting famine relief. By supporting some famine relief efforts in the province, we could greatly bolster our legitimacy and convince them that we, not the foul traders in Beijing, are the true rulers of China. Fine. Kamilu Kanet, huh? Xinjiang. You know, I don't care where we go. Just send guys out. We need army XP, man. <coughs> nice. The best we can where we go. So, the council votes on limited conscription and volunteer force. Oh crap! What? Oh, did I forget to? Do oh crap! I forgot to do it. Uh, we lost the ability. Uh, commissioners convening the legation council for an important administrative matter. Whether or not allow the international volunteer force to begin limited conscription of the citizens of the international quarter to allow the force to be better defend the cities. With the hope of lasting peace in the far east growing ever, ever further by the day, many in Shanghai find it necessary to expand the local protections available to cities. If limited conscription is implemented, it's likely that the council will not feel obligated to expand recruitment of the ethnic Chinese. A move the volunteer force the leadership is said to greatly oppose. However, a council might also feel to expand the force's manpower, allowing us to stress their own defenses more. Let's see how this goes. I forgot to reduce... Uh, God dang it. Demobilization, but whatever. Whatever. Sichuan grain supplies ready. At last, shipments of grain intended for Sichuan are almost ready to be sent. Uh, shipping them will be circuitous, owing to large amounts of hostile armies between us and Sichuan proper, but we doubt even the Zili are heartless enough to stop grain balance of the suffers of a famine. Proof of our legitimacy. The Recovery League uh, nominates a new economic minister. Um, the Recovery League sets its sights on the economic minister proposing Pan Fu as a replacement for the current occupant. Pan is known to be experienced in the role, having served both under the Baiyan government and her own, but during that time he built up an unfortunate reputation for shady dealings and corruption. He is yet to be convicted of any crime, and it is even possible that these widely held suspicions are unfounded, but his past seems likely to haunt him if he reoccupies his old post. Despite the risk, the Curry League's advantage in government means that only the Grand Marshal can prevent his appointment. Hmm. Curry League is 33%. Well, we had the guy earlier, so whatever. As long as it all balanced out in the end. The vote fails. Yay! Interesting. The Japanese demands. Oh, we had hoped Z Lee would not dare intercept our famine aid. Japanese agents have informed us that they have informed information suggesting the traders will do just that. The Japanese have provided an alternate proposal. Flying their own flag on the shipments, the Zilu would never dare provoke an international incident by attacking Japanese ships. Although this would paint us as puppets of to Tokyo in the eyes of those watching the ships. Ignore them. Use their flag to bypass Wuhan and then switch ours. On the Navy, if you want to know about that one, please go ahead. The Asia Express runs from Port Arthur to Harbin. For the first time, Montetsu's Asia Express streamlined train will be running from the tip of Port Arthur to the northern city of Abim. An astonishing 130 kilometers an hour. 
putting among the fastest trains of the world. The journey took a mere 21 hours and 30 minutes. The locomotive wonder bears cars outfitted with heat, air conditioning, and luxurious lunches for even third-class customers, as well as its very own signature cocktail served at the bar. While many, while Met Metisu's unmitigated success is only given some to cheer, and may even strike envy in Beijing, others can only view Metisu's investments with growing concern. A modern marvel. A single other one more division. The Wallonia crisis, nice. Mantetsu influence. Mantetsu's academic influence spreads across the country and through the assembly. While well, government is for now committed to privately resisting, the average seem to be growing weaker by the day. And necessary evil? What are your divisions up here? The vote passes. Cool. Belgian concessions are confiscated. It seems the legation councils confiscated Flanders Valonian's concessions and removed their ambassador from the council. Although theoretically, the concessions are now revert back to us, it's likely that the legation council will now administer them since they lie in the neutral zone of Tianjin. Indeed, it's not possible for that another constitutional power may attempt to buy them from us with the council. For now, though, many private leaders rejoice at the end of one of the unequal treaties. Goodbye! Yamato Hotel Licenses. Montetsu's Yamato Hotel License <clears throat> has long been a staple of the South Manchuria Rail Railway Zone. The concession zone ceded first to the Imperial Russia and then to Japan after 1906, and then expanded following the 21 demands of the 1915 through a rather loose interpretation of its provisions to include all of Southern Manchuria. All the same. While treaty rights permit Japanese to reside and engage in business and manufacture of any kind, construction still theoretically requires approval from the local governor and, if necessary, the Grand Marshal himself. Mantetsu aims to rebuild by a series of new hotels, all of which will inevitably become hubs for further Japanese activity. And while construction could never be stopped without angering the Japanese government, limits might be imposed to forestall Japanese influence in certain areas. Unfortunately, as much as it may stand as physical edifices of Japan's strength, the hotels are frequented by the Japanese elite and many Mantetsu employees, making them crucial for the rapid development we as are. Bozo, please. How much influence do they have right now? 32% is quite a bit, though. Recovery League would go down even further. We lose a lot of political power, we get more stability, which is nice, but limit construction. We do get more war support. And we could honestly use more war support because we do want to go to early mobilization. Mm, we need 25% war support. Actually, if we do this one, we can get up to partial mobilization then. So, well. We get closer. Yeah, partial mobilization. A job well done. A telegram from Chongqing arrived, signed by Liu Zheng, gratefully thanking us for help with the release of Sichuan. The system wonders for a reputation in the far flung, heavily populated province, helping to rebuild the regime's legitimacy in southwestern China. Excellent. Yay. Nice. Hey, uh, legacy. Eliminate our investment dearth. And I probably want to do rearm the northeast, at least a little bit. I'll open the propagation front. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad either. Begins a path to war with Beijing. Quantum proposal. Um, that's not bad either. Moral indoctrination. That's getting a started for the land auction would not be bad. Regular riverboats. Um, I do want to get more industry stuff though. Like that's going to be super important. Infrastructure, civilian factories, political power, and more stability would be good. <coughs> um, Wang Yong Yang's legitimacy? Mature transformation from backward borderland into one of the China's most prosperous regions owes itself to the work of Wang Yong Zheng, Zheng Zulin's late finance minister. Disgusted by the Grand Marshal's costly excursion south of the Great Wall in 1928, Wang resigned and died shortly thereafter. Therefore, has left work unfinished, and we must pick up where he left off. Oh, Japan's anger. They discovered a little trick of swapping our flags with theirs after we departed Wuhan, and they're not pleased. Already, angry telegrams arriving from Tokyo, unbraiding, upbraiding Zeng Zulin for the insolence and threatening to cut development aid. Let him shout. Oh, boy. Well, oh, well. Since we're here, um... I always go to Superior Power. Let's go to Grand Battle Plan. That seems like more of a thing to do for us, probably. Artillery wouldn't be bad. It's still 36, though, so... Some better, better reinforce rate. Yeah, and they were attacking us, which is what I just wanted us to do. 
like hold wherever we can. Coup d'etat in Algiers. All right. Flanders. Camus. If we could do something like this, that'd be great. Anything here? Ooh, sca you know what? Go scavenger. We could honestly probably use more equipment as much as possible. We need more guns anyway, so... And we're not going to get rid of that just yet. We got plenty of Barty, which is great. Oh, look at this. Gansu? Why does that pop out? I don't know. You guys actually win here? Oh, well, Huey Long's been elected. Look at that. They're throwing in more and more and more divisions. Holy crap. Oh, you need a general, too. Um, eh, I don't want to send you in, but whatever. Yeah, look at that army XP. Hey, sending more guys out everywhere? Not a bad idea. Oh, actually, you do have planes here. We only sent 13. God dang it. Uh, fighters, maybe? Now recover the League nominates a new interior minister. So they nominated Jin Yong Peng as a replacement for current interior minister. He's known to be capable, as he was once a high ranking member of the Anhui clique. And in the years since 27, he served as one of the Recovery League's most prominent members. However, his rivalry with the communications clique leader Liang Shi Yi is well known, and should the two come to serve together in the government, there's a chance of friction or even perhaps open conflict. Some are also reluctant to trust such a prominent member of the former Anhui clique in such a high office. Um, wait, Liang Shi Yi. Appoint Jin. Uh, so the interior of the minister. Economy. So, this is it's our resistance growth speed, but honestly, I like the political power. So, probably not. Ah, screw it, just do it anyways. I don't want to lose any more political power anyway, so whatever. Keep holding out. You're doing well. You're learning a lot. I love it. <clears throat> Alright, so we can go somewhere else here and attack. Actually, if you want to help support the attack, you might be able to do well there. Or if you, if you attack up here, you can do well. I don't mind that either. You can push actually in. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, boy. Get that extra research slot, son. Come on, man. Just win, please. Just win. I'm going to do Chosabu. The South Manchur Railway Company's research wing, colloquially known as Mantetsu Chosabu, has grown up over the past few years from a mere corporate uh, R&D department into the heart of the Japanese colonial research program with divisions dedicated to everything from agricultural science to intelligence gathering. The organization's sheer scales led to open, opening of offices in Berlin, Vancouver, and New York to attract foreign talent plus wide recruitment from Japan's foremost universities. The result is a surprisingly liberal and open-minded intellectual community which sometimes puts a scientific inquiry before nationalistic concerns. This appears to be one of those instances, as the government has been approached by the Chosabu representative offering uh, future assistance in one of, of several fields. It should be noted that the Kwangtung Army Garrison in Port Arthur were strongly opposed to the arrangement. Radar? Receive bonuses to any radar research completed by Japan. Construction. Production efficiency. Intelligence. Receive an intelligence agency upgrade directly applied by Japan, but we don't have one, so... I'm gonna go with construction. I don't know if they have anything in research, though, but let's go with construction, maybe? Maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Sino-Japanese joint companies. Not bad. Begins a war path. I like that. Reclaim, rearm the Northeast. It's so long, though. Shining Arsenal. That's not bad, either. Yeah, this is so long. The Quantum Protocol. It requests artillery and tanks and stuff. Uh, found an... The, yeah, maybe we'll do this one. In the years of economic hardship following the last Zaifeng War, the military academy of the three eastern provinces began to stagnate. By refining the old academy under a new name and updating its curriculum, it can begin again to become a point of pride. Oh, whoops. I still have you guys. Yeah, continue hanging out here. Um, well, they're, they're actually advancing pretty heavily, so... We're doing okay up there, though. My clique is a little okay-ish. They're attacking us. Italian government falls. Very cool. And you guys are just kind of hanging out for now, huh? Uh, that's over a river. But you're still winning, though, which is... Hey, you know what? I'll, I'll take that. Support the attack here, maybe? Educational vacuum. Nice. That's over, which is great to see. Oh, you were about to win there, but whatever. And how's Indochina doing? That's a non-Christian pack. Hongzhou attacks in... Oh, look at that. 
Heyo Jiang, Hongz, uh, Hong Zui, translated literally as Red Beards, are recent groups of bandits and robbers of long lived in the Northeast. In recent years, the Hong Zui have usually been content with low-key extortion, banditry, and ransom, but several new market towns in southern Heilongjiang have been set alight. This is unusually bold behavior, perhaps encouraged by the nation's recent focus on events in the south. Some have argued that the expedition should be mounted to crush the bandits and send a clear message, but various generals, generals feel that such a mission is beneath the central government. We could also ask the Japanese for help, and thought this, though this idea is unpopular, it's an expedition. Zane Clique. Just deal with them. You're going to be learning a lot here, son. Reforming Manchurian provinces. So let's just assume it could full control Norway. At the start of the 20th century, Manchuria was well, a poorly managed frontier, brought by lawlessness and banditry, where the rule of Zhang, however, came rapid reforms to his finance minister, Wang Yong Jiang. Wang backed his currency, uh, originally no different from those printed by other warlords, and with silver generating confidence, which led to some gains in value against the Japanese yen. Uh, extensive tax reform solved outstanding debts. And by the early 20s, the economy was bolstered by immigrants fleeing instability throughout the rest of China, of course. Of course, this could not last, and Minister Wang resigned in 28 and died the next year, unfortunately. With Feng Xin's economy only beginning to recover from eight years of post-war decline, the time has come to implement new reforms, inspired by one of the old and returned to the Northeast to a trustful place as one of China's most prosperous regions. A minister must be chosen to draw up the necessary plans to determine the priorities for the government effort. Uh, so who do we currently have? Oh, oh! Yeah! Nice, military factory construction speed goes up, yes. Uh, that's not bad. We already had some of these guys before, so. Uh, political power. Let's if you're a capitalist. Well, this is for Manchurian finance. The economy minister currently is this guy. Minister of the Interior, authoritarian Democrat. So efficient sociopath. Cool. Central as the banks. Oh, look at that. Nice. Um, the current league already has way too much influence. Like, I'll be honest. As much as I want them here. Actually, do we have problems if they have too much influence? No, no, no. Yeah, they're dominating everything, though. Zing clique. You know what happens? With, you know, I want to see what happens. So now they're forty-six percent, which is probably a bit too much, but whatever. Shh! Don't tell the Japanese that. What are you seriously trying to attack? Can you actually win there? You can. Holy crap! Disastrous government. Okay, this is bad. Whoopsie. Uh, with the power of the other factions receding, the recovery league has found itself in an unprecedented position of strength. However, the league is far cry from the political party is often believed to be, lacking functional leadership and clear direction at its higher levels. Its lower levels falling prey to various special interests and personal squabbles. The result is a government unable to govern, and while the Grand Marshal is able to use his extensive powers to ensure a continued order, this and the league's unscrupulous actions tear the government's already thin veil of legitimacy. The balance must be restored of the countries to prosper. These things are spiraling out of control. Well, now we know what's going to happen. I don't like what happens. So let's not do that one next. Uh, if that's the case, uh, Recovery League. Well, we can do maybe this one next. Help balance it out a little more. Yeah, uh, that's it. Yeah. Found the Northeast IDC. At the Japanese recommendations. A proposal has been put forth by, to organize several influential businessmen and politicians into a body called the Northeastern Industrial Development Commission that might guide Feng Shun's industrial development. Hey, I only did it just to see what would happen, so. And now we know. The Zhang clique nominates a new interior minister. And there goes Bulgaria. Thanks to the increasing power in the government, the Zhang clique has moved to nominate Yuan Jinkai as the interior minister. Unlike many of his faction, Yuan is much of a bureaucrat as he is a soldier, with experience managing logistics in Heliojiang and his position on the Chinese Eastern Railway Board to give him ties to and rivalry with the communications clique. While he and his faction proclaim absolute loyalty to the Grand Marshal, the more power they hold, the more the other factions grow restless, giving some reason, at least for Zhang, to possibly review Yuan. Zhang clique gets more recovery or influence? Um, it's Minister of Interior, though. There you go. 45%? Wow, it didn't help us much, but whatever. Helped out a little, at least. Yeah, you should be able to win here. And then we'll centralize the banks. Hong Zui attacks in Jing An. Despite efforts to contain them, Hong Zui have, uh, struck again, this time Jin, in Jing An, bringing farmsteads and traders along its major roads. Local governor has dispatched his garrison to guard the future incursions, but the rough terrain and bandits' elusive nature suggests that they may simply strike again elsewhere. There are rumors that the group, now several thousand strong, is led by Zhang Haitian, known among the, among the locals as Lao Bai Feng, or the nor old North Wind. Hunt him down. Hunt him down, you son of a gun. Well, the Japanese here, you could probably strike him out, probably. Look, I'm, I won't get as much army as possible, so, like, 
You keep attacking, and I'm going to feel okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's not bad. I'll get some more army speed here, too. Because we just want to reform our army. Mustafa Kamal sees his power. Nice. Can we actually promote someone here? Yeah, might as well. Uh, let's promote this guy. Hey, Santa Fe in America. Nice. Oh, you actually won. Look at that. Nice. Good job, guys. How many guns are we out? Mine, only 3,000. We got plenty of artillery. I don't want to put more artillery on guys right now just because I, we got to save every single thing of, you know, army XP. So, I don't know. We'll see. Still looking okay ish down here. Not great. Definitely not great, but the state of the officer corps. Fengshin's officer corps is an unusual mix of uh, young Chinese educated the Rikugan Shikan Gaoko in Japan, older Chinese who served in the Civil Wars, and uh, Japanese officers, part of the military mission of Fengshin. All united by common loyalties to individuals more than any special dedication to the state. Japanese officers, in particular, are known to prioritize any, any station in the Northeast. They devout currency. Allowing them to live lives of relative luxury and hire servants for most menial tasks, earning them the enmity of not only their fellows, but also the local population. Now, the founding of the Shenyang National Academy. These officers have taken the opportunity to mock the academy's current accommodations, which are decades old and in disrepair. While a newer modern building arises nearby, the pitiful state of the academy at present leaves the government open to criticism. Unfortunate, but what are you going to do about it? I do want to take here next, probably. But... These guys, please, guys, do not just like all just attack all willy nilly. Like that's a bad idea to do that. So we're really focusing on expanding ourselves. Ashan mines. Uh, we'll be okay for now. We'll probably do this one next. Reorganize NTC. Akiva's oh, gone. Um, industrial subsidiaries. Yeah, I could probably do this one. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is next. Montetsu, also known as the South Manchuria Railway Company, exerts an enormous amount of control over our economy. With the numerous subsidiaries ranging from flour mills to hospitals, it's able, unfortunately, to be essential to developing most aspects of our economy that require Japanese technical assistance. Which is, you know, it is what it is. You gotta take the good and the bad. So. Uh, now it's a new economic minister. Although most members of Zila Clique are military men without such much experience in managing a national economy, the office of economic minister is still important to the long term political and military goals. And as such, Tang Yulin, which I've heard of before as well. What the heck? We get this guy again? Zhang Clique, huh? Well, whatever lowers this one, so I point him. Founding of the Jilin Film Association. Bringing together staff from the photographic division, directors from Japan, and local acting talent. <clears throat> Montetsu has begun the process of establishing a film studio in Jilin, which it claims will demonstrate what China can achieve with modernity through the camera lens in a unique Chinese style. Privately, Montetsu's president has indicated that the studio will also be used to subtly spread anti Zili messages, but this has left some close advisors to the Grand Marshal wondering what else must be subtly inserted. The government could always instruct Zhilin's governor to deny Montetsu permission to build, but the film association would likely move just south to Port Arthur, where it would have no influence over it at all. Increase it for now. Just for now. You might be able to win, maybe? Maybe not. I mean, it is mountains, so go figure, go figure so. They're doing well over here, though. So... You know what? We're still getting army XP. We have 34, which is not bad, actually. Nice. Keep building, though. Keep building, 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 building. I'm only missing one aluminum, so that's not bad. <coughs> Even though we need way more guns. And we need all that artillery for later on, too, so. Can you guys actually win here? You might be able to. Maybe they did throw in more divisions. Yeah, we should be able to win there now. It's cynicalism, huh? All right, whatever. Hawaii doing the right spec. Good luck with that, Hawaii. Oh yeah, push it if you can. But having four research slots is pretty nice. Not gonna lie, that's pretty darn nice. Ohara, nice. Trench warfare is good. Get more trenchment. More max money is good as well. The Northeast Industrial Development Commission, at Japan's request, <clears throat> and with no particular reason to refuse, we have established a large legal and fiscal framework enabling the creation of the Northeast Indiv Industrial Development Commission, serving to oversee and direct the development of Fengshin's industry, mostly through the allocation of funds and leases, the Commission of New York now faces the question of its composition. The Concordia Association has pro provided 
uh, or proposed the inclusion of a series of extremely talented individuals with experience working for the Nissan and Mitsubishi Zaibatsu in Japan, who stress the need for an export-driven economy taking advantage of Vengjin's natural existing existing natural resources. While the Grand Marshal's generals insist upon the necessity of an army first approach to development and using the considerable influence to ensure the placement of military men on the commission, the communications clique recommends their own presence and advocate a mixed development approach, referencing their long experience with business dealings across China as well as more recently here in the Northeast. Unfortunately, a compromise involving all the three parties is practically impossible, and as, as, as a clear vision is necessary for the task, an intra-commission bickering would almost certainly rid it render it functionally impotent. Additionally, although the commission's nature as an appointed body permits the presence of Japanese in its makeup, the public and much of the assembly will likely react negatively to the presence. At the same time, the Japanese will not appreciate exclusion. We could use more industry. The army must come first, which is not bad. And the click, click is more. And actually, are we back down to magnetic influence? Ooh. Political power, that actually hurts us quite a bit. We give them more civvies. Wow, that sucks. Unscrupulous governance, okay. A mixed approach is bath. One melee. Communications. That's currently where. Eh, we could actually help them out. That's not bad. Army must come first, though. We could really use more military factors. Even though I want more cities. You know what? Mm. I'm going to use this one. Let's do that one for now. Japanese electrical stuff. Uh. Reorganized NTC. Founded by the Fengjin government shortly after its creation, the National Transportation Commission serves as a planning board for infrastructure construction across <clears throat> the country. The Japanese allege that its foremost aim is to disrupt Mantisu operations, and there may be at least some truth to this claim. And we got some bonus political power there too, which is re really, actually really nice. So, nice. 37, get some construction speed. Thank you. Somehow we're going to win someday, somewhere. So, if not, it'll happen eventually. You guys actually win there. With us assisting, you might be able to, maybe, as we are getting attacked ourselves. So hold first, hold first. We don't want to lose. Oh, Austria and Hungary. Crisis on the Danube, nice. Let's go and centralize the banks. Fengshin currency free features four note issuing banks, namely the Bank of the Three Eastern Provinces, the Bank of Jilin, the Bank of Hi Heilongjiang, and the Frontier Bank, each of which are products of earlier centralization efforts. It now seems pertinent to complete this process and unify them all under a single central bank. Hey. Reforms, my friends, reforms. The Hongzui and Jing'an melt away. Despite our best efforts, the Hong Zhang Haitian and his Hongzui have disappeared in the Manchurian wilderness. Some reports suggest he crossed the Amur just south of Aigun, seeking refuge across the Russian border. Others believe that the bandit chief himself is dead, killed by some insubordinate, leaving the 1,000 strong gain to disperse. <clears throat> and its members once again content with routine theft and extortion. All agree, however, if the old North Wind is alive, he'll likely return in due time. Let us hope he is dead. Yeah. How about there? You could probably definitely win there. How are we doing over here? We could not take the province, god dang it. <clears throat> My of collaboration. And the NTC, of course, as well. How are we doing around here? Doing okay? Can you actually help attack and win here? Maybe not. Dutch elections. That's looking pretty scary around here. And they nominate a new economic minister. They're nominating Ruan Zendu for the position of economic minister, though trained as a doctor and not an economist. Ruan's extensive ties with the Japanese in the medical field led to his meteoric rise in politics, and now acts as a primary go-between for the Japanese foreign ministry and the Concordia Association. While his lack of experience in economics may be a concern, Ruan is known to be diligent, and the Japanese foreign ministry's handling of events in Feng Shin is notably more cautious than that of Mantesu or the Kwantung army. Uh, I don't want to hurt that so much, so... We gotta get a good balance here, right? Right? Maybe. Well, with us setting all these divisions around the place, like, at least we're getting more experience. At least that's always good to get. Head up here first, just in case. Because this looks like a good area that we could get really attacked at. You actually might be able to win here, maybe? With us helping us helping him out, maybe? We'll see. And over here, how are we doing? Ah, Spain's finally falling apart. Yay! That's not a mod, unless Spain falls apart at least once. Why do you come up here and do that? <clears throat> you could get in circle, but... Fill the Japanese, or fill the Silver Reserve. Look at that. 
Japan would like this. This decision is mutually exclusive with the reintroduced the Fengxing dollar. The Fengxing Yuan, our principal currency, is backed by silver in the past has even gained value against the Japanese yen. This has been met by Japanese insistence that reserves have never had enough silver to properly back the currency, and regrettably. There may have been some truth to this, and so silver must be purchased if we are to attract additional investment. Or reintroduce the dollar. The Fengxing dollar was one of the former civil governor Wang Zhang Yang's later experiments, and served as a currency not backed by silver but still payable in tax, demonstrating the government's faith in its value but requiring no extra silver to print. Following the enormous government expenditures during the last Xifeng War and subsequent inflation, the currency was discontinued, but its flexibility could be useful today in attracting additional investment. This will make the Japanese like us more, but this costs more. I want to do that one. Did you win here? Yeah, you might be able to win here still. Nice. You're still getting attacked, which is good. And you're probably losing down here and uh, not. Collaboration. The anti C. Cool. No war yet. And open the propaganda fronts. We could probably do that. Recovery League, huh? You're in the North East. Modernize the curriculum. I like getting some bonuses of the land auction, though. And extra army experience now would be pretty good, too. Lessons from the Xifeng Wars. Uh, the last Zili Fengxian War saw the Fengxian army fighting enemies whose weapons and technology outclassed their own. Through trials of fire and blood, improvised weapons and unusual methods <clears throat> emerged to suit their new environment, allowing their soldiers to punch above their weight. Not a bad idea. Japanese ambassador becomes High Commissioner of Shanghai. If you want to about that, please go ahead. Asians for Asia. All right then. Five divisions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Five divisions is a bit too much for us to strike out there, so let's not do that one. Still attacking us? Mm, yes. Yes, they are. Oh, do we win here? <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh my goodness, my voice is cracking all over the place. Well, mm, we'll wait to that division back to soon. It's to Spain now. The Chinese are going all over the place, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, my apologies. It's like I'm going through a second puberty or something. Good luck, boys. Good luck. You're gonna need it where you're headed. Nice. A new academic minister. Uh, the communications clique's nominated Li Xiao Gang, which I think I read as four earlier, so. Communications clique? If you want to read that again, please go right ahead. Why not? Guys, you don't want to attack just all willy-nilly. Like, for realsies. Now Shandong. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. And then, yeah, we'll do uh, lessons. Chilean Argentina War, nice. If you could go in there, that would probably be pretty good. Into China, ooh, dismiss industry, very good. Uh, planes, get some better artillery already, it's fine. Rio is NTC, nice. Guess we might efficiency. It's not bad. If you both attack, you might be able to win. Maybe if this guy could help attack as well. Maybe, maybe not. It's hard to tell. Yeah, honestly, probably not. Probably not. Honestly. Oh, you're getting attacked here too. Cool. And over here, you're doing okay-ish. Ish. Prince Kan In Ko To Hito sets to visit the Northeast. The Japanese consul in Shenyang is handed the government documents detailing the planned arrival of the prince, Kanin Kotohito, great uncle to the reigning emperor, who will tour the North East later this year. He's been to Manchuria before, and will almost certainly be an inspection as much as a show for public relations. He is known to take special interest in our plans to reclaim the rest of China. The exact date for his arrival has been withheld for security reasons, and Japanese concerns are not unfounded. It's well known that there are extremist elements in Shenyang and throughout the region that might wish the prince harm. Every effort should be made to ensure that he is both safe and satisfied during his visit. Preparations must be made. Okay, by the line. Great Fortress Manchuria. 
The Yan Mountains to the south, the lesser Kigan uh, Range to the west, <clears throat> and the Bohai Gulf to the east created a natural fortress around the Manchurian Plain, leaving the Shan Hai Pass as the only easy point of entry. It's easy to fortify the northeast when nature has already done so much of the work. But... At least we need more infantry equipment. Okay. So, you know what? We could probably cut these out. Cut these out. We might be able to get that one, so... Build the rail line. It's complete. Do we have enough political power for this? Investigate the officer corps. Re reinforce sol soldiery discipline. This seems like this would really help us out that much right now, so... So we need more guns. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of guns. It's probably a bad idea going into here, but we'll try it. They don't want us to go in there, though. Hey, look at that. I do want to build a line, though. The Sir Tax Dispute. The loving of seemingly arbitrary taxes to fill gaps in the budget, genuine or not, has been a long-standing practice of national, regional, and local government across China. And including our own. This time, the Interior Minister Yuan is pressuring the Director of Chinese Eastern Railway and Economic Minister Li Xiaogang to levy additional taxes on the railway for its purpose of furthering the strengthening of the army, threatening an investigation of communications clique assets, as well as various fees the board already charges its customers, the revenue for which will almost certainly stick to a number of fingers. There is a li every likelihood that, as Yuan is a member of the CRE board himself, this is a power play on this part to weaken his rivals, but such a tax would undoubtedly help fill the national treasury, if at the cost of undercutting competition to Bonsetsu. It seems likely that the Grand Marshal will be forced to settle this, this dispute, lest it spiral out of control. Mm. Communication is already. No, that's not bad. Court Association goes up a little more. Consumer goods minus 20% is pretty darn good, though. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. Zane Clique influence goes down, though. Can we afford that? Eh. Ah, do it anyways, why not? So we should actually be able to... Well, that doesn't help out that much, but still. How's Spain looking? I'm just, you just you're literally just here to just get army speed. That's all I care about. So good luck, guys. Good luck. Both the locations. Navy again. Good Japanese investments. Um. At least we got another division, but we need that other stuff out too. Seven. We'll have it very soon. Yeah. Increase security in Shenyang. Yeah. A new interior minister, which Kyle Rulin is a replacement for the position of interior minister. Although he's quite influential with his own party, his decision to sign Japan's 21's demands in 1916 has haunted him for the past two decades. While he retains pro Japanese sentiment, he appears to have made genuine efforts in years since to distance himself from both his decision and his Japanese collections, or connections. Uh, at the same time, his power within the party is second only to his leader, Liang, uh, Shi Yi, and his talents are many. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, why not? Communications could use that. And the Anshan Incident. The iron ore deposits in Anshan have been worked by Japanese owned subsidiary of Mount Tetsu since 1918, known as the Anshan Iron Steel, serving with Japan's most viable sources of steel outside of the home islands. When the facilities were first constructed, most of the ore required a little digging, as the deposits are closer to the surface, but as of the current date, a more extensive, extensive excavation is required to continue operations. The company has begun this expansion work without acquiring a lease for the actual land from the local authorities, destroying several farm properties in the process, and despite promises of neither competition nor the lease has been forthcoming. <clears throat> Protests quickly broke out among local farmers over the issue and soon escalated into riot that severely damaged expensive mining equipment, which our police refused to prevent, citing the technically illegal nature of the operations on its own initiative. A nearby Japanese garrison from Anshan stepped in and used lethal force to disperse the riot. The slaughter of our own citizens has not gone unnoticed, and existing anti Japanese sentiment has only been inflamed. The people will hold us accountable to in response, but the deposits and the company working in them are central to Japan's strategic goals, and our relationship with the Japanese permits little room to maneuver. Much I want to do that. I think it's best to just hold on for now. 
slow down. But I think I'm going to end the episode there. If you do like the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow as we will continue trying to make Asia more for Asians, but specifically more for the Chinese us. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.